Good morning. On behalf of all of us assembled here, we would like to welcome all who are visiting with us this morning. And to all who are new to our parish family, welcome. If you have not already done so, we ask that all cellular devices be silenced at this time. Deacon George will assist Father Jim, who will lead us in our celebration of the Eucharist. Please rise. <clears throat> we invite everyone to please pick up your songbooks and join in singing our gathering song number 765. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this morning. Friends, this day as we celebrate Corpus Christi, the sacred body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We recognize that in this body there are many ministries that indeed build up the body of Christ. And one of those ministries is the extra, extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion. And so our sisters, Mary Beth Connolly and Karen Cordo, Cordovacovi, are to be entrusted with administering the Eucharist, with taking communion to the sick, and with giving it as viaticum to the dying. Friends, in this ministry, you will be examples of Christian living and faith and conduct. You must strive to grow in holiness through this sacrament of unity and love. Remember, though, that many, we are one body, because we share the one bread and one cup. As extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion be, therefore, especially observant of the Lord's command to love your neighbor, for he said to them, This is my commandment, that you should love one another as I have loved you. Friends, are you resolved to undertake the office of giving the body and blood of the Lord to your brothers and sisters, and so serve to build up the church? Friends in Christ, let us... Oh, are you resolved to administer Holy Eucharist with the utmost care and reverence? Friends in Christ, let us pray with confidence to the Father. Let us ask him to bless and bestow our sisters, chosen to be ministers of the Eucharist. Merciful God, creator and guide of your family, bless our sisters, Mary, Beth, and Karen. May they faithfully give the bread of life to your people. Strengthened by this sacrament, may they come at last to the banquet of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we thank you for your willingness to serve this wonderful community of St. Rose of Lima.
Let us pray. (coughs) Blessed are you, God most high, maker of heaven and earth, whose covenant with Abraham is a blessing of peace for all the people of earth, and whose covenant in Jesus nourishes and sustains all who hunger for the bread of life. As often as we eat the bread and drink the cup that proclaim the Lord's death, let the love of Christ compel us to hand on to others, without judgment or measure, the blessings we ourselves have received so generously at your hand. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, You proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, Lord, Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the man there numbered about five thousand. Then he said to the disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about fifty, They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said a blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled twelve wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Saint Maximilian. Colby said this, If angels could be jealous of men, they would be so for one reason, Holy Communion. That special gift that Jesus gave to our human family is Holy Communion. And every year the church celebrates this feast day of Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. 
the bread of life. And several passages in the scriptures direct or indirectly refer to the bread. For example, Genesis, the first book of the Bible, mentions bread and wine and the sacrifice offered by Abraham to Melchizedek. The Gospel of John speaks of bread which satisfies hunger, and the Apostle Paul explains the significance of Holy Communion when he says, As often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. And that mention of the bread in the book of Genesis is connected to the story of Abraham, who had a battle that lasted 13 years against several kings who held his nephew, Lot, captive. But in the 14th year, Abraham achieved victory over the kings and came with bread and wine to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to God. And so the action of Abraham resembles the offering of bread and wine during Mass in memory of the sacrificial death of Christ. As Abraham offered thanksgiving to God, so did Jesus express appreciation to God when he lifted up his voice and his eyes in thanksgiving before the sharing of bread and fish. The actions of Abraham and Jesus are very significant as they give glory to God for their achievements. So likewise, the miracle of the multiplication of bread in the gospel today reminds us of some of the Pharisees and words, I'm sorry, phrases and words used in the Eucharistic prayer, such as, he gave thanks, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. The Eucharist is that perfect expression of thanksgiving to God for God's goodness in our very lives. The sixth chapter of the Gospel of John dwells primarily on what Jesus said and did with bread. Before Jesus fed the multitude, he took bread and he gave thanks to God. Jesus compassionately fed the hungry crowd by miraculously multiplying a few loaves of bread. Inasmuch as the crowd came to him to receive spiritual food, he was aware that they also needed physical food to keep their bodies and souls together. So he provided bread and fish. Friends, Jesus knows we are confronted with all kinds of hunger. We experience physical hunger that urges us to eat and to drink. We experience emotional hunger that makes us long for compassionate companionship and friendship and keeps us in touch with one another. We experience intellectual hunger that pushes us to study, to learn, and to acquire some new knowledge. We experience spiritual hunger, which makes us hungry and thirsty for God and long for the divine peace and justice he offers us. Jesus was speaking about the spiritual hunger when he said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. The multiplication of the bread and the fish for the hungry crowd reminds us there is a chronic physical and spiritual hunger in us and in the world around us. We see that there there is such a chronic food crisis, acute food shortage, and a spike in global hunger. Our mothers experienced that just recently, didn't they? When they couldn't get formula for their babies. Panicky that they would starve. Consequently, some people do live be low the poverty line level. I said some people, too many people. However, no one has provided us with statistics about the millions and billions of people 
who also suffer from deep spiritual hunger in our world today. We see around us a moral crisis where the value of human life, no matter at what stage, is not valued, where children are killed, where the innocent are murdered. The moral crisis around us says that there's a shocking massive population who live well below standard and decent moral and spiritual life. The body and blood of Jesus Christ, Holy Communion, in the form of bread and wine, are available to satisfy spiritual hunger. Some are spiritually hungry and are ignorant of Holy Communion. And some receive Holy Communion but do not value it. Too often we find stuck in a hymnal a sacred host. They make it appear as an empty and perfunctory ritual that has no connection to the soul. A Jesuit priest gives a vivid example of how Holy Communion is taken for granted by a recipient. Here's the story. I read a cartoon with the following idea. The mother-in-law goes to church in the morning after attending Mass and receiving Holy Communion. She comes back home, but on the way, she shouts at beggars. She yells at people's driving using hand gestures that we are all well aware of. (coughs) Reaching home, on the way she is quarreling with neighbors. When she gets home, she fights with her daughter-in-law. And so the point is too easy to escape our attention. The Eucharist fails to make any change in the quality of her life and her relationships. It has not touched her in any way. And so if the Eucharist does not make any change in our lives, it's failed its purpose. And so there is a link between Eucharist and our life. The Eucharist, Holy Communion, adds value, quality, and change to the life of those who receive, who understand and believe in its wondrous power. As children attended catechism, we recited complex words and phrases and sentences that define the Eucharist. An outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. We didn't even know what we were saying. We didn't really grasp it. One of the examples of difficult words is the explanation of in the small catechism that offers about Holy Eucharist. It simply says... Holy Eucharist is the body and blood of Christ, together with his soul and divinity in bread and wine. Through the years, we have been babbling these words without taking time to really reflect on that meaning of body and blood of Christ, which is also called Panis Angelicus, bread of angels. Food for eternal life. So we do our best as God's people, I would hope, to prepare adequately to receive worthily. Prayer. We pray that as bread and wine are transformed into the body and blood of Christ, we too may be transformed into what we eat by becoming more Christ-like. We let it change us. As we gather at Mass to give thanks, to bless, to break, and to share bread, we may also imbibe the attitude of gratitude and the joy of sharing our time, talents, and our resources with others. As we share in the body of Christ, may we accentuate our unity as a collective body with Christ as our head, May Jesus satisfy our deep yearnings for the word of God and the bread of life. May we seek Christ in his body, which we receive 
And may Emmanuel, God with us, dwell among us always. May the Holy Communion be the remedy for our distressed spirit, an elixir to revive a stone-cold heart and to rejuvenate all fainting faith. And so we let these questions guide our reflection today on the body of Christ. How deep is our understanding of the transforming power of this Holy Communion. Do we always appreciate Jesus Christ for satisfying our spiritual hunger? And so today in honor of the Blessed Sacrament, the true living body of Christ among us, at the end of Mass we will we'll have a short procession and to honor the Lord we will do so pretty much in the silence of our hearts. And when we leave in silence today, we recognize that as we have received, so we must be, that we allow in silence as we leave to allow ourselves to become what we have received. Friends, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Lord Jesus, you give yourselves to us, sustaining us and giving us life in you. Confident in this. We raise our prayers to you, knowing you will hear and answer. May the Church bear witness to the compassion of Christ for the multitude, never sending anyone away, but gladly offering to all the Word of God and the bread of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all the people of the world be delivered from seeing one another as enemies finding instead common ground and sharing together the feast of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our ministers of communion witness the saving mystery of Christ by their deep faith in the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May Christ heal and strengthen the sick who receive Holy Communion from our Eucharistic ministers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May fathers everywhere be blessed with the grace that enables them to nourish and cherish their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May each of us here generously give ourselves to others as Jesus gives himself to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May Olivia, Vasconca, Patricia, Cliff, and all the faithful departed be gathered among the multitude of saints who feast at the banquet of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God grant these needs which we hold in our hearts. For these needs, and for James H. Jackson 
Antonio Palermo, and Patricia and Stephen Sweetlow, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Bishop O'Connell, who is in the hospital battling a uh, blood uh, infection. For our bishop, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you give us all good things in unsurpassed abundance and generosity. Grant these our prayers, and through your gift of Eucharist, transform us into being ever more perfect members of the body of Christ. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I would also direct you to bring a bulletin home today because there will be no announcements made at the end of Mass today because of the presence of the Blessed Sacrament.
Friends, please pray that our sacrifice this morning be acceptable to God, who is Almighty. Grant your church, Lord, we pray the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross. He offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery. You make them holy so that our human family, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song and adoration, and we, with the hosts of angels, sing that hymn of your glory. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become, for us, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. He said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his beloved friend, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his beloved disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out, for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of our faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout our world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, with the clergy, religious, and all those whom you call to belong to the body of Christ. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, with St. Rose, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Friends, with trust in God, whose providence nourishes and sustains us, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus your Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold, the living bread come down from heaven. Those who eat of it will never die. Behold, the cup of eternal life. Those who drink of it shall live forever. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be there.
an act of spiritual communion for our brothers and sisters who are praying from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Let us pray. Grant, Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of your precious body and blood. And we pray for the same, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to wish all of our dads a Happy Father's Day today, and after the procession and the closing anthem, uh, we would ask that we would keep our conversations uh, outside once we get outside, okay? Have a beautiful day today. Please join in singing hymn number 785.